Hey guys, it's Caden here, and it's officially the apocalypse. And you know what that means? Looting random buildings to find supplies. I found this place. It's large and empty, mostly, but I did manage to find this. It's some sort of gun thing. It makes holes. Not bullet holes, but, well, I guess it'd be best just to show you. In all seriousness, this is just a prop. I made it based off of the portal gun from Portal Stories Mel. One of probably the best portal mods ever, and it manages to create this custom portal gun model that is evocative of the original portal gun, what with the sort of uh, slanted sides and everything, but also manages to evoke the 1960s or 70s aesthetic that the portal gun would have been built in universe. I really like it, and I wanted to make my own version of it. So, without further ado, let's get into how I built this. The first major part of any process like this is to make a CAD model. So I took some screenshots and got to work. I ended up finding this image that someone had made that showed the model at a variety of different angles, so I imported this in as a reference plane and scaled it. I had taken this screenshot, and from measuring my thumbnail and comparing it to Mel's, found that this line here is approximately 7 centimeters long. From this, I was able to scale up the image and get it extremely close to the proportions in the game. I then went through and modeled the outer shells before modeling the nozzle, which was then connected to the core. From this came the other bits and bobs like the vent, the cable holders, and the arms. I would wager that the model here is close to 90% correct, with maybe some missing proportions and some slightly off things with the arms. I did leave out the wires and the decals from the model because I didn't feel quite like modeling those. With the model out of the way, it was time to actually start printing the pieces. My printer had a fit with some of the arm pieces, so to solve that, I ended up actually forcing the first segment and the mount together for easier printing, which I think was a pretty good choice. On the other side, I also decided to split the tips apart because those weren't printing well either, and I just wanted to be able to take that weird angle out of the equation. Just a dot of glue to connect them, and it looks perfect. In terms of electronics, my plan was to use this digit spark as the brains of the whole thing. I managed to get it working, but while attempting to add in a button, I fried it. After doing some reading, I have a hunch that I accidentally shorted the voltage input pin directly to ground, which is one way to destroy an Arduino. Thankfully, I was able to buy some more for cheap, so the project still went on. To super simplify, here's the circuit. The LEDs are connected to pin 2, with another wire connected to pin 4 that connects to one end of the push button. Also connected here is a 10k ohm resistor that connects to 5 volts. The other end of the button connects to the 5 volt in, and everything else is pretty simple. The grounds connect to each other, it's 5 volt to 5 volt, it's pretty self-explanatory. The LED ring is the 1.5 inch one from Adafruit, part of their NeoPixel line which basically lets you wire a bunch of LEDs together in series, and individually change each LED's color in the chain for some neat lighting effects. This is nice because it allows for daisy chaining the ring and this extra LED that we're using for the top vent hole. It's as simple as connecting the out pin on the ring to the in pin on the extra LED, and connecting power and ground. Directly connected to the LED ring is this acrylic tube, which serves to diffuse the light to mimic the light tube at the front from the game. This looks absolutely amazing, especially in low light. In order to not have a massive breadboard inside the portal gun, I tried to compress this whole thing into a super tiny board, which would simply stack on top of the Digispark. This was a bit of a challenge, but I did manage to get it working. However, during installation, I kept breaking wires off. And after trying to solder the wires back on a few times, I ended up just giving up and soldering all the wires directly to a different Digispark. Back over to the parts, it was time to get rid of all of the support material. I did this with a combination of snips and surgically peeling and cutting, and also just going in with a pair of pliers. I found a drill that worked well for the button hole, simply jamming and twisting with small files for the switch hole. After removing all the supports, there were still some burrs and stuff, so I decided to use some files and sanding blocks to smooth down the surfaces even more. This did kill the nice black finish on the parts, so even the parts that are black on the actual model had to be painted too. I did all the painting outside over a few days, just putting on another coat every couple of hours. It looked pretty good, save for some small streaks of black due to the filament lines coming through. I did notice some warping on a couple parts thanks to leaving it out in the sun. It's really only super noticeable on the core piece, which has this massive divot on one side. The shells still fit over it, and those didn't warp that much, so it still looks pretty good. I also threw in a coat of clear coat, which just serves to protect the paint job and smooth out the finish so it feels nicer to hold. After this, it was time to assemble. I started by first gluing the acrylic tube to the LED ring, using hot glue so in case the wires broke, I could easily pull it apart. And it's a good thing that I did, because the wires broke multiple times. The tube is held in by a tiny dab of hot glue in the front. 
After that, I put the top LED through the hole and glued it to this small piece of acrylic which slots into this recess. After that, it was time to slide on the rear shell, which was held on with hot glue again in case I needed to remove it to repair something. I simply used the holes for the nubs and vents to pour hot glue between the shell and core to prevent smearing and sticking where I didn't want it. That wasn't really an option for the front shell, so there is a bit of glue residue, but not too much that it destroys the look. I could always sand this down later and throw in a bit of paint. The arms were a bit of a pain to assemble, as I wasn't aware that super glue doesn't stick to spray paint. If I had known that earlier, I would have glued them before painting, but hot glue ended up working out alright. I had originally modeled small holes in the arm mounts that would hold the wires in place, but they didn't print that way, so glue it was. I did film me trying to use some hot glue, which worked to a point, but I ended up just sanding it down and using super glue. The wires themselves are just small sections from a roll of black wire that we picked up from a surplus store a year or so back. And that's the entire portal gun. It looks absolutely phenomenal, even with all the minor issues. I really need to make a stand or something for it, but it does stand up on the handle like this, which works well enough, I suppose. Thank you all so much for making it this far in the video. I really, really enjoyed making this, and it's probably one of my favorite projects to date. It was really fun doing something that's just a pure aesthetic design that also happens to be from one of my favorite games of all time. If you enjoyed the music that's been playing throughout the background of this video, it's actually composed by me under the artist name Vend Action. It's off of the album Chamber 00, which is a portal-themed house music album that I made. You can download it for free through the links in the description if you want to. Thank you so much for watching, and keep thinking with portals.